Hello, I'm Tim Durham with Durham's Bee Farm. This is the time of the year in the spring when bees will swarm. Uh, people have babies and bees swarm. That's how they multiply. You don't want your bees to swarm. If they do, chances are you'll lose them. So you can take measures uh, to uh, prevent that. Uh, so let's let's go over that. Uh, if you put a package bees in this year, you do not have to worry about them swarming this year. Uh, the next year and thereafter, the the it increases quite a bit the chance of swarming. Let's say that you have a two brood chamber hive. Uh, you can let a little smoke uh, drift out in the front of the hive. In this situation, don't blow any smoke into the entrance yet. Uh, go to the rear of the hive and and uh, put some put some smoke under the top cover uh, a, a good amount, and you know wait about a minute. Uh, you take your top cover off, and with two hive tools in the rear, separate the brood chambers. Uh, it's always good to use two hive tools. Uh, it will make it easier for you to separate them, plus you will uh, uh, damage the wood less by using two hive tools. Raise the rear of the root chamber up and if you uh, if there's so many bees that you can't get a good idea then smoke them a little bit and see if you see any queen cells from the bottom of the top root chamber see if you see any queen cells hanging down from the top root chamber they, they look like peanuts, and if you see if you see any, then they're going to swarm. Now, when you raise this brood chamber up, uh, if there's some queen cells that's hanging down, uh, it will it will it will pull the the end of the queen cell. It will pull it off. When it does that, you can look at the the queen inside there and see if she how developed she is. If she looks like a queen, like you've seen pictures of, then they get swarm the next day. But you can get an idea from the pupa of the larvae how far along they are. But let's say that Let's say that you do see queen cells on the bottom of the top brood chamber. Ease, ease it back down. Now, go on top of the hive with thick smoke. And I use pine needles. I think there's advantages of different things, but overall, I prefer pine needles. And you want a thick white smoke. And... Smoke the top of the brood chamber, the top brood chamber, smoke it very heavy. And be sure you get some smoke between each frame, in the cracks between every frame. Now, the queen will be in the bottom brood chamber, and a lot of the bees will. At this point, set the top brood chamber off a side. Take the bottom brood chamber that has the queen in it and a lot of bees and move it down the way. Get your original top now, put it back in the original spot. Put the top on it and also you can put the top on the other one. Now, the queen is is going to be, chances are, the queen 
is going to be in the original spot now. Most likely, the queen cells were all in the original top box. So it's over here by itself, and they'll make a queen. They've already got queen cells, and then you got the queen in this one. Now, if you don't want two hives, then after they've settled down, and they've got the swarming out of their blood, then you, you can merge them back together. But if you, if you don't do something, and you let them swarm on you, then chances are you will lose, lose the hive. Uh, uh, now, if you want to, if you're inclined to take the frames out of your out of your uh, high bodies, and 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 make your own split, then uh, you can do that, of course. And uh, when you make a split, be sure that every uh, uh, split has at least three three frames are covered in bees and if they had queen cells in there that's that's even better um, if you if you're buying a new queen then you do not want queen cells in the split that you're putting uh, the new queen or they, they they won't accept her most likely making a split and you set the split three or four feet away or whatever. Uh, I've always said, you know, move them two miles off, and that's that's not practical for a lot of people. So let's say that you make the split and you put them several feet away. Uh, the further away, the better. You can, if you move them, we'll say 20 feet, then every, every day you could move them two feet back toward where you want, want them to be. But let's say you make your split and the next day after you make your split, let's say that the original box, the original spot has too many bees in it and the split does not have enough bees in it. You can swap the boxes. You don't want to wait several days. You want to do that the next day. But you can peek in the hive and see if you have enough bees still left in the split. If you don't, then you can swap them and that will now give the split hive uh, uh, enough bees, most likely. If y'all have any questions, Go down, uh, it says, down below, it says public comment. And uh, I, I answer all the questions. I'm happy to help you. And uh, uh, and then there's a thumbs up. Click If you like it, click on it. If I've helped you, then uh, there's a red bar that says subscribe. And click on that. And uh, y'all have a, uh, have a good beekeeping uh, season. Thank you. This is our new baby in the house, and her name's Sheila, a mini Australian Shepherd, and she's five months old. We love her. Uh, I was talking to an old man the other day, and he told me they, he and his wife, uh, been married uh, sixty years. And I said, the same woman? He said, he said, <laughs> he said, oh no, she's not the same. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to tell you about a, a young friend I've got, and uh, uh, his mother, <laughs> his mother come to visit, you know, and uh, he's got a, a housekeeper, and he saw his mother eyeballing, you know, paying attention to the house, housekeeper. And uh, he realized that, uh, you know, she was young and pretty and curvaceous, curvaceous. And uh, 
So he figured he knew what his mama was thinking. So he said, Mama, said, we're, we're not sleeping together. said, everything is professional. So Mama went back home, you know, and the housekeeper, uh, a few days later, told the young man, said, uh, you know, ever since your mother was here, I cannot find that nice silver gravy ladle. Nice silver gravy ladle. Since your mother was here. So, my friend, he wrote his mother, and he said, you know, Mama, I'm not saying you did, and I'm not saying you didn't, but that nice silver gravy ladle has come up missing <laughs> ever since you was here. So his mama read that, and a few days later he received a letter in the mail and said, son, She said, son, I'm not saying that you're sleeping with her. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying you're not sleeping with her. But son, if she, <laughs> if she, if she had been sleeping in her bed, she, <laughs> she would have found that nice silver gravy <laughs> gravy ladle. <laughs> you have to love it. I'm telling you, you have to love it.